I took the path less traveled and that has made all the difference, okay? So when I first read this Robert Frost poem as a college student, it really resonated with me. Right? And I took away this one piece about taking the path less traveled. And what did that mean for me? That meant that as an undergraduate trying to decide what I wanted to do when I graduated, I already knew that I didn't really want the regular nine to five job that my parents had had and that my parents wanted me to have. What I wanted was something different. What I wanted was to experience the world. And I was able to experience the world through study abroad programs in Spain, through travel in Costa Rica while I was a student, but I knew I wanted to take it to the next level. And even though as a senior I was actually offered a job after graduation, I turned it down and instead joined the Peace Corps. So I was assigned to Senegal, West Africa, where I was a health extension volunteer for three and a half years in a village of 130 people, a Pular village in the southeast of Senegal. And when I first arrived there, the Peace Corps van dropped me off in the middle of the village with little to no language skills, and everyone surrounded me, saying hello, talking to me, and I had no idea what they were talking about. It was completely unknown to me. Fast forward three and a half years later, and I'm sneaking out at four o'clock in the morning to ride a bike into town to catch a bus, to then catch a plane back to the US, tears pouring down my face, leaving without saying goodbye to anyone. Because in the Pular tradition, if you don't say goodbye, you have to come back to apologize. And that awareness that I had and had gained in three and a half years, the mere fact that I had gained language skills, I had gained skills as a health educator, I had gained the cultural understanding that I could not say goodbye so that I'd have to say hello again to them in some time in the future. I went back a year later. It was a transformative experience. It was an experience that moved beyond any sort of job I would have had if I had gone straight into working for a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C like my parents wanted me to. When I came back from the Peace Corps, I had a very strong idea that I wasn't ready for the real career path yet, <laughs> after three and a half years of living in an African village. Instead, I was really interested in understanding how we got our food in the United States. I had spent so much time living with an agricultural community in West Africa that I wanted to know how agricultural communities in the United States lived. So I actually um, worked on a farm, an organic farm, downstate from New York for 10 months um, outside of Port Jervis, New York, and learned from the ground up how food is produced locally on small farms, organic farms. And through that experience, I learned that I didn't want to be a farmer. <laughs> right? I love the food. I love eating it. I will spend a lot of money on organic produce, but I do not need to farm anymore. I learned enough through that process. So then what was next? I got offered a job leading a study abroad group to Senegal, and I decided, well, let's go back to Senegal for a month, and I did that. And from that, I got offered a position at Yosemite National Park, working um, with high school students, getting them engaged with the National Park Service through internships and volunteer experiences and backpacking trips. None of these jobs screamed career. None of these jobs screamed I'm gonna make a lot of money, I'm gonna build up towards my retirement. But what they did show me and guide me on this path as to what I wanted to do. By ruling out the things that were important to me and the things that were less important to me, the activities that inspired me, the activities that inspired me a little bit less, I came to terms with the fact that I eventually wanted to be an anthropologist, okay? And this actually was sent home to me when I went to Brazil for the first time. So I had saved up some money, I'd heard amazing things about Brazil, and after spending so much time in West Africa, I was really interested in understanding the African diaspora. So how cultures had left Africa and spread through the slave trade into the Americas. And being that my family is Portuguese and I already had a foundation in Portuguese language, I went to Brazil and I went to the northeast of Brazil where there's a big Afro-Brazilian community. So I arrived there, immediately fell in love with it, saw the similarities between my village in Senegal and the women and people I was meeting in Brazil. And I said, this is it. I want to work the rest of my life coming to Brazil, right, living there on and off, asking interesting questions, trying to understand the people. And specifically, I was interested in understanding what impacted their health and well-being. 
So after seven years of exploring, traveling, taking odd jobs, four months, six months stints here and there, I applied for and was accepted into a PhD program in cultural anthropology with a specialization in medical anthropology. And seven years later, here I am at SUNY Geneseo as a professor of anthropology. So why do I share these stories with you today? I hear from so many of my students anxiety and nervousness about what they're gonna do after college. What is next? Am I gonna be able to find a job? Am I gonna have a career? What do I want that career to be? And what I'm here to tell you today is you don't have to know, right? You don't have to know what you wanna be doing 10 years from now. You only have to know what you wanna be doing four months from now, okay? Figure it out four months, six months at a time. Find something that inspires you, something that you feel passionate about, something that you won't make any money doing, and just try it out. So what are your parents gonna think about this? I'm sure there's a couple of parents in the audience thinking, cringing in their seats right now. Right? So if you have a plan, this is what I found with my family, if you have a plan, if you can tell your family how you're going to pay your bills, confirm to them that you won't be sleeping in your car, and that you have health insurance, which is a lot easier now, it'll be okay. Most parents will see that you're happy, that you're taken care of, that you know how to take care of yourself, and that you're ready to fulfill your dream, even if it's just a dream that's gonna last four to six months, or in the case of Peace Corps, two years, or maybe it's just one summer job abroad. There are so many opportunities out there. Peace Corps takes you abroad. AmeriCorps in the US, you can volunteer for a year or two years with nonprofits and parks in the United States. Teach for America is another fantastic organization that allows you to teach in low-income American schools and make a difference that way. Okay? Or maybe you're not as concerned about making a difference. Maybe you're just exploring, and that's okay too. Interning in Washington, D.C., New York City, in Rochester, New York, wherever an internship that you find interesting will take you, go there. And then waitress at nights, right? Serve, work in a coffee shop. Do what you need to do to pay the bills, but spend your day hours exploring what you love. And then you can tell your parents, you can tell people who think you're crazy that you met a professor at SUNY Geneseo who said, I spent seven years living a vagabond existence, exploring the world, and eventually I became a professor. Eventually I became a doctor of philosophy, so apparently it's an okay route to travel, right? So sometimes this path less traveled, sometimes this path less taken will lead you to your ultimate goal of living your dream, finding that dream, and then living it. And that's all I want to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you.